Yeah. Okay, I'm uh, Dr. Rob Truesdale. I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I specialize in complex uh, hip uh, uh, problems in uh, primarily young, uh, uh, young patients, both young and old, but I take care of a young uh, adolescent patient. And today we're going to be talking about hip dysplasia and hip impingement. And what those two conditions are is they're really two conditions where there are structural problems about the, about the hip joint. And it's an important topic because there's a lot of young patients that have these two, one of these two conditions that have symptoms about the hip joint that can be improved with uh, either a structured non-operative treatment program or a, on occasion surgical uh, intervention. What the two conditions are is they're really structural problems about the, about the hip joint. And if you, one thinks about the hip joint, it's uh, a cup, a ball, and it's got cartilage on top of the cup and cartilage on top of the ball. And you've got a normal hip joint, the ball is covered properly by the socket, and you've got cartilage rubbing against cartilage. And if the structure is normal, the hip joint will last that patient for, typically forever, unless there's some unusual injury. If you have a structural problem about the hip joint, and hip dysplasia is one such structural problem, hip impingement is another structural problem, there's lots of different types of hip impingement, the structure or the hip is not properly aligned and it can lead to cartilage and labrum changes which is a structure around the socket and eventual to loss of cartilage which is really arthritis in the hip. And I tell patients uh, both these problems are similar, your hip is similar to a tire for your car and the tread of the tire is like the cartilage in the hip joint. And if the tire or hip is malaligned then the tread can wear out or get damaged prematurely. If the tire or the hip is perfectly aligned, then the tire or the hip can potentially last patients for 80, 90 plus uh, years, really throughout the lifetime of an, active, uh, of an active person. If you have one of these conditions, so the hip is malaligned, the alignment's not proper, the treatment options really are, are twofold. You can do non-surgical things, that should always be tried first probably, depending on how severe the malalignment problem is. The non-surgical things one can do uh, are over-the-counter medicines, modifying your activities, avoiding activities or positions of the hip that cause discomfort. If the non-operative things have failed and the pain is bad enough, after an appropriate evaluation by a hip surgeon with appropriate imaging studies, which should include plain radiographs and on occasion three-dimensional imaging of the, of the hip joint, then sometimes surgery is indicated. And the surgery for dysplasia and the surgery for impingement is often different. Dysplasia is a condition where the socket doesn't cover the ball completely, what we call classic hip dysplasia, and if the non-operative things have failed, the pain is bad enough, the treatment of that patient's dysplasia is to put the socket over the ball better. And The only way that can be accomplished is with what doctors call a pelvic osteotomy, where one breaks the pelvis, moves the socket over the ball better to improve the coverage of the ball. At the same time, if there's any chondral or labor problems, sometimes that's combined with arthroscopy or an open procedure where you take care of cartilage and labor problems. Impingement is a different problem, and that's where the socket or the ball aren't structured properly, and there's a conflict or an impingement between the shaft of the femur at the top of the thigh bone and the acetabulum, and that impingement or conflict can also cause cartilage damage. The treatment of that also should be non-surgical things that I previously mentioned. And if the non-surgical things fail, the pain is bad enough, then the best treatment for that is to realign the hip joint. That can be done either arthroscopically or open. And there are pros and cons of doing it arthroscopically or doing it open. The plus about the arthroscopic management is it's, uh, in theory, a less invasive approach. The downside of the arthroscopic management is it may be not uh, as comprehensive of a correction. It's difficult to do some of the maneuvers or corrections through the scope that you can do open. The open surgery, which can help improve an impinging hip, is a little more invasive. The recovery is probably a little bit slower, but it affords the surgeon the ability to really make the hip as close to as normal as possible. Now both the hip dysplasia and impingement the rate limiting factor, or the factor that determines how good you'll do, primarily is how good the cartilage is. Back to the tire analogy, if you've got a tire that's malaligned and your tread is in great shape, you realign the tire, that tire is going to do quite well. But if you have a hip or a tire that's malaligned 
and there's severe tread damage or severe cartilage damage, you can still do the reline procedure, but the outcome may not be quite as satisfactory. So if you have an impinging hip or dysplastic hip and you're symptomatic, you want to have the surgery if you're going to do what we call joint salvage surgery before the cartilage is severely, uh, severely damaged. Once the cartilage is severely damaged, really the only treatment option is, that's going to work uh, reliably is going to be a hip replacement uh, uh, procedure. So if you're young and have structural problems in the face of reasonable articular cartilage, the best option if the symptoms are bad enough is to realign the, uh, realign the hip joint. The future of this surgery is going to be less invasive techniques where it affords the patient a much quicker recovery and the, in the distant future, and we're nowhere near that now, but eventually hopefully we'll have materials that can substitute or replace for damaged articular cartilage. Because in 2011, we don't have great techniques to replace or restore damaged cartilage. The technique we primarily use is to replace that patient's uh, uh, hip with an artificial uh, uh, bearing surface, which of course has a limited, a limited lifespan. Thanks for your attention.